Today's video is about how I converted my Chevy truck from throttle body injection over to carburetor. I'm going to show the fuel lines and the pressure regulator that I used and the general setup. Uh, so here I've installed uh, a new 383 engine uh, into my K2500 Chevy truck. I've got a Holley 670 CFM and uh, I've got two and six lines coming up uh, to the primary and secondary bowls here. Uh, there's two adapters and threaded into the fuel bowl, a 7 8 20 thread, it goes to AN6 male, and then uh, two female AN6 hose ends. I've got them wrapped in some insulation and also have some uh, split loom wrapped around them that you generally use for electrical uh, wiring. Uh, this is uh, on top of the AN6 hose uh, just for abrasion resistance. And uh, also from Earl's, I purchased some uh, hose separators. You can see there, it's uh, aluminum, two halves clamped together to hold your hoses together. I've used several of them here. And uh, I've actually uh, fueled my carburetor from the rear instead of the front because I am using the in-tank fuel pump. So as you can see, uh, I have it clamped there behind one of the, uh, one of the hoses clamped behind the uh, stud that's holding the valve cover on and then uh, the other hose from the rear bowl comes in and it goes side by side and then uh, I have one of those um, hose separators and then another one down below uh, on these trucks there's plenty of room behind the engine and where the factory brought up fuel to the TBI was from behind just like you see here and so this travels down on top of the transmission and there's a location that I clamped uh, the hoses and I'll show you that uh, when we go down underneath. So that's the general setup from up here. I think I mentioned before I am using the combination uh, oil pressure switch and oil sender as the uh, power for my pump for safety. This is the connection to it. Uh, when the engine sees oil pressure, the fuel pump should come on. That's the backup system that the TBI was using. And in addition to that, I've also, in this uh, spaghetti of wiring over here, uh, there's a line that goes to the fuel pump relay, which I'll be using uh, with a switch and an ignition feed for an emergency fuel pump in case something happens to the oil pressure switch. Okay, so we're going to go down underneath. I'm going to show you the regulator and then the general setup down there. We have a light over here illuminating it. So this is the, from Professional Products, this is the uh, fuel pressure regulator that I'm using. It has a return line uh, there in blue and red uh, hose ends, that's the return. And the two lines you see going straight up there with the 90 hose ends uh, goes up to the carburetor. Uh, this is preset to 6 PSI or so they say, uh, which I hope it is because it, the way I have this thing hooked up here is going to be difficult to adjust the pressure. So hopefully it's 6, 6 PSI. And so these lines go up above the transmission and they go up over uh, the exhaust pipe there. And you'll notice I've wrapped it with some insulation there. There's plenty of room there. It should not be an issue. And so I tapped into the lines using a an, uh to tube adapter, uh, it may be hard to see in the video there, but um, the return is a 5 16 line, uh, pretty typical of cars that had two barrel carburetors on them. Uh, if you had a high performance car, a four barrel carburetor, usually it's a 3 8 speed line. So in this case here, I had a 3 8 speed line and a 5 16 return. Uh, I'm using a 5 16 uh, tube adapter to AN6. And it goes into this hose here for my return. I'll drop down below the torsion bar so you can see 
on the bottom of that regulator is actually the return and I'm using a red and blue hose ends for that and so the pressure feed line that's coming from the in tank pump uh, is that one just below the frame rail there it goes in uh, I'm using a 30 degree hose end on that one because uh, the uh, outlet on or the inlet to the regulators at 30 degrees there so that brings out the hose straight and that goes into the remaining hose that I uh, sacrificed from the original fuel line uh, goes into another one of those uh, tube adapters that I was talking about and then I'm going into the factory uh, TBI fuel filter so I used uh, parts from the original fuel line to adapt into the and hose setup that I have here. Uh, I'm going to try to sweep around behind here and you can see maybe a little bit more. Yeah, see if I can get my hand up in here, I'll show you. So this is the 5 16 return line and then the factory had this connection here and then this went into the uh, factory lines that went up to the TBI and I just cut that off and put my tube adapter there and then for the feed for the actual inlet or out output from the fuel pump this is the original uh, TBI fuel filter a short section of the uh, hose and then adapted into an uh, six hose over here and so that's my general setup for my fuel and uh, I don't expect any problems. I've got plenty of room around everything. I've got things heat shielded when it, where they needed to be. And then having it wrapped in the split loom also, like just like the factory did it, uh, should prevent any abrasion to the, to the and hose. So see if I can get into position here and you can see how See how the two lines go up. I got it clamped. It was actually a little flange sticking out around the transfer case shifter with a hole in it, and I used that as a, for one of the clamps, and then uh, tied it together another another place there with one of those uh, separators. And I go up over the transmission there. Pretty much the same as the factory did it going to the TBI. And so by retaining the in-tank fuel pump, if I ever want to go uh, back to a, an aftermarket fuel injection, uh, I can do that easily. Okay, here's another, another place over here. I'm not so sure you can see it, but another place where I use this uh, Velcro wraparound insulation. It's always a tight place on Chevrolet's there where uh, the starter wires come down and they go through that little factory tube there and so I just protected it a little bit with uh, some of that insulation because the headers are kind of close by there. Alright, so coming right along, probably sometime this week we'll be starting this thing up. Uh, I'm going to show one more thing as soon as I get up off this creeper. Alright, today from Chevrolet, the accessory drive kit came in. This is it here. I've opened the box, but I really haven't done much else with it. I'm expecting to put that on tomorrow. Uh, this is the deluxe kit. It comes with everything you need, except this one does not have an AC compressor, but it does have an AC bracket. Uh, I had the AC compressor one on order, and it looked like it was never going to come in, so I called Summit and asked them, hey, do you have the one without the AC, and if so, can you ship it to me? And so they did. And I'll get me an AC compressor later and fix my AC once it gets my new engine going. So I'll take one more shot of the engine here and that'll be it for this video. Uh, there's another spot where the main line from the battery goes down to the starter. I use some of that insulation there. Some really nice stuff. Uh, it comes in different sizes. It has uh, a Velcro closure and it's split so you can wrap it around things that are already hooked up. Uh, use it on my fuel lines here and there's one other spot that I'm going to have to use it to protect my wiring right in this location here 
you see some of those um, split loom harnesses coming down kind of close to the header. I'll be using some there as well. I've got my carburetor on and mounted, bolted down, and my throttle linkage is already connected. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.